uh, one of the first applications uh, that we showed in the paper was to crack uh, text-based CAPTCHAs. What are CAPTCHAs, by the way? Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. By the way, one of the most awesome, like I, the people don't use this term anymore, it's human computation, I think. Uh, I love this term. The guy who created CAPTCHAs, I think came up with this term. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what are CAPTCHAs? So CAPTCHAs are those strings that you fill in uh, when you're, you know, when if you're open, opening a new account in Google, they show you a picture, a, you know, usually it used to be set of garbled letters uh, that you have to kind of uh, figure out what 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 is that string of characters and type in. Mm -hmm. And the reason CAPTCHAs exist is because, you know, um, Google or Twitter do not want automatic creation of accounts. You can use a computer to create millions of accounts uh, and uh, use that for in nefarious purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to make sure that to the extent possible, the interaction that you know, their system is having is with a human. So it's a it's called a human interaction proof. A CAPTCHA mm -hmm. is a human interaction proof. Yeah. Um, so, so this is a CAPTCHAs are by design things that are easy for humans to solve, but hard for computers. Hard for robots, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and text-based CAPTCHAs where was the one which is prevalent until around 2014. Because at that time, text-based risk captures were hard for computers to crack. Even now, they are actually, in the sense of an arbitrary text-based capture will be unsolvable even now. But with the techniques that we have developed, it can be, you know, you can quickly develop a mechanism that solves uh, the captcha. Uh, well, they, they've probably gotten a lot harder too. The people they've, 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 <laughs> they've been getting clever and clever at generating these text captures. Yeah, correct. right. So okay, so that was one of the things you've tested it on is these kinds of captures in 2014, yeah. 15, correct. that kind of stuff. Right, right. So what? Uh, what, I mean, why? By the way, why captures? Why? Yeah, yeah. Even now, I would say captcha is a very, very good challenge problem. Uh, if you want to understand how human perception works and if you want to build uh, systems that work like the human brain. Uh, and I wouldn't say CAPTCHA is a solved problem. We have cracked the fundamental defense of CAPTCHAs, but it is not solved in the way that humans solve it. Um, so I can give you an example. I can um, take a five-year-old child who has just learned characters uh, and uh, show them any new CAPTCHA that we create. Mm -hmm. they will be able to solve it. Uh, I can show you pretty much any new CAPTCHA uh, from any new website. You'll be able to solve it without getting any training examples from that particular style of yeah. CAPTCHA. You're assuming I'm human, yeah. Yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> so if you are human, I, yeah. if you, otherwise I will be able to figure that out <laughs> yeah. well, using this one. <laughs> but uh, this, this whole podcast is just a Turing test, that's a, long, right. a long Turing test. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry. So yeah, uh, so human humans can figure it out with very few examples, or no training examples, no like training. no training examples from that particular style of capture. Yeah. Um, and and so you can you know so uh, even now this is unreachable for uh, the current deep learning system. So basically, there is no. I, I don't think a system exists where you can basically say train on whatever you want, and then now say, hey, I will show you a new capture which I did not show you in in the in the training setup. Will the system be able to solve it? Um, it? Still doesn't exist. So that is the magic of human perception. Yeah. And Doug Hofstadter uh, put this uh, very beautifully in uh, one of his uh, talks. The the central problem in AI is what is the letter A? Mm -hmm. If you can if you can build a system that reliably can detect all the variations of the letter A. You don't even need to go to the... <laughs> the, <laughs> the B and the C. Yeah. yeah, you don't even know to go to the B and the C or the strings of characters. And uh, so that that is the spirit at which, you know, with which we uh, tackle that problem. Well, what does it mean by that? I mean, is, is it uh, like without training examples, try to figure out the fundamental uh, elements that make up the letter A? Right. In all of its forms. In all of its forms. It can be, A can be made with the two humans standing, leaning against each other, holding the hands. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it can be made of leaves. It can be... Yeah, you might have to understand uh, everything about this world in order to understand the letter A. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so it's common sense reasoning, right, essentially. Right, yeah. Right. So, so to finally, to really solve, finally to say that we have solved CAPTCHA, uh, 
you have to solve the whole problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what? How does uh, this kind of the RCN architecture help us to get uh, do a better job of that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, one of the important things was being able to do inference, being able to dynamically do inference. Uh, can you can you uh, can, can you uh, clarify what you mean? Because you said like neural networks don't do inference. Yeah. So what do you mean by inference in this context then? So, okay. So in captures, what they do to confuse people is to make these characters crowd together. Yes. Okay. And when you make the characters crowd together, what happens is that you will now start seeing combinations of characters as some other new character mm -hmm. or, or an existing character. So you would, you would put an R and N together. It will start looking like an M. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so locally, they are you know they, there is very strong evidence for it being uh, some uh, incorrect character. But globally, the only explanation that fits together is something that is different from what you can find locally. Yes. So th so th so this is uh, inference. You are basically taking uh, local evidence and putting it in the global context, and often coming to a conclusion locally, which is conflicting with the local information. So actually, so you mean inference like uh, in the way it's used when you talk about reasoning, for example, uh, as opposed to like inference, which is a, with, neural, with artificial neural networks, which is a single pass to the network. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. So like you're, you're basically doing some basic forms of reasoning. Correct. Like integration of like uh, how local things fit into the, the global right. picture. And, and, and things like explaining a way coming into this one because Got it. you are, you are uh, explaining that piece of evidence uh, as something else uh, because globally that's the only thing that makes sense. Um, yeah. So now uh, you can amortize this inference by, you know, in a neural network, if you want to do this, what you, the, you, can, you can brute force it. You can just show it all combinations of things uh, <laughs> yeah. that you want to, you want to, uh, your reasoning to work over mm -hmm. and you can, you know, like just train the hell out of that neural network and it will, Look like it is doing, uh, you know, inference on the fly, but it is it is really just doing amortized inference. It is because you you have shown it a lot of these combinations during training time. Mm -hmm. um, so what you want to do is be able to do dynamic inference rather than just being able to show all those combinations in the training time, and that's something we emphasized in the model. What does it mean, dynamic inference? Is that that has to do with the feedback thing? Yes. Like what? What is dynamic? I mean, I, I'm trying to visualize what dynamic inference would be in this case. Like, what is it doing with the input? It's shown the input the first time. Yeah. And is is like what's changing over temporally over? What's the dynamics of this inference process? So, so you can think of it as you have um, at the top of the model the characters that you are trained on. Yeah. They are the causes. They, you are trying to explain the pixels mm -hmm. using the characters as the causes. The you know, the characters are the things that cause the pixels. Yeah, so there's this causality thing. So the reason you mentioned causality, I guess, is because there's a temporal aspect to this whole thing. In this particular case, the temporal aspect is not important. It is more like when if if I turn the character on, the the pixels will turn on. Uh, yeah, it will be after this a little bit, but okay. Yeah. So that is causality in the sense of like a logic causality, like right. hence inference. Right. Okay. Right. The dynamics is that uh, even though locally it will look like okay, this is an A, mm -hmm. uh, and and locally just when I look at just that patch of the image, it looks like an A, mm -hmm. but when I look at it in the context of all the other causes. It might not, you know, AM is not the something that makes sense. So that is something you have to kind of, you know, recursively figure out. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so, uh, and uh, this thing performed pretty well on the captures. Correct. And, uh, I mean, is there some kind of interesting intuition you can provide why it did well? Like, what did it look like? Is there visualizations that could be human interpretable to us humans? Yes. Yeah, so the, the good thing about the model is that it is extremely... Um, so it is not just doing a classification, right? It is, it is, it is, it is providing a full explanation for the scene. So when when it when it um, operates on a scene, it is coming at back and saying, "Look, this is the part is the A, and these are the pixels that turned on. Uh, these are the pixels in the input that tells makes me think that it is an A, 
mm-hmm. and also these are the portions i hallucinated it, it, you know it 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 provides a complete explanation of that form and, and then you know, so these are the contours these are this is the interior and this is in front of this other object so th- that that's the kind of um, explanation it um, the, the inference network provides so so that that is useful and interpretable um and uh, um then the kind of errors it makes are also i don't want to um read too much into it but the kind of errors the network makes are uh, very similar to the kinds of errors humans would make in a, in a similar situation so there's something about the structure that uh, feels reminiscent of the way humans uh, visual system works well I mean, uh, how hard coded is this to the capture problem? This idea, uh, not really hard coded, because it's the uh, the assumptions, as I mentioned, are general, right? It is more, um, and and those themselves can be applied in many situations, which are natural signals. Um, so it's it's the foreground versus uh, background factorization, and uh, the factorization of the surfaces versus the contours. So these are all generally applicable assumptions in, in all vision. Yeah. So why why capture why attack the capture problem, which is quite unique in the computer vision context, versus like the traditional benchmarks of ImageNet and all those kinds of image classification or even segmentation tests, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Do you feel like that's? Uh, I mean, what what's your thinking about those kinds of benchmarks in um, in this in this context? I mean, those benchmarks are useful for deep learning kind of algorithms where you, you know, so the the settings uh, that deep learning works in are, here is my huge training set and here is my test set. So the the, the training set is almost, uh, you know, 100x, 1000x bigger than uh, the test set in many, many cases. Uh, what we wanted to do was invert that. The training set is way smaller than the, the test set. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, uh, and you know, uh, capture is a problem that is by definition hard for computers, and it has these good properties of strong generalization, strong out of training distribution generalization. If you are interested in studying that uh, and putting uh, having your model have that property, then it's a, it's a good data set to tackle. So, is there have you attempted to? Which I think I believe there's quite a growing body of work. I'm looking at MNIST and ImageNet without training. So like taking, like the basic challenge is how, what tiny fraction of the training set can we take in order to do a reasonable job of the right. classification task? Have right. have you explored that angle in these classic benchmarks? Yes, so so we did do MNIST. So, um, you know, so it's not just CAPTCHA. We, mm-hmm. uh, so there was uh, also uh, uh, versions of, Multiple versions of MNIST, including the the standard version, which where we inverted the problem, which is basically saying rather than train on sixty thousand uh, training data, uh, you know how uh, quickly can you get uh, to high level accuracy with very little training data? Was is there some uh, performance that you remember, like how well how well did it do? How many examples did it need? Yeah, it, it, I I like, you know I remember that it was you know uh, on the order of uh, tens or hundreds of examples to get into ninety-five uh, percent accuracy, and it was it was definitely better than the systems, other systems out there at that time. At that time, yeah, yeah, they're really pushing it. I think that's a really interesting space, actually. Uh, I think there's an actual name for MNIST that, uh, like, there's different names to the different sizes of training sets. I mean, people are like attacking this problem. I think it's yeah. super interesting. Yeah. It's funny how like the MNIST will probably be with us all the way to AGI. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As the data set that just sticks by. It is, it's a clean, simple uh, data set to, uh, to study the fundamentals of learning with. Just like captures, it's interesting. Correct. Not enough people I don't know, maybe you can correct me, but I feel like captures don't show up as often in papers as they probably should. That's correct, yeah. Because, you know, um, usually these things have a momentum. Uh, you know, once once uh, something gets established as a standard benchmark, yeah. there, is a, there, is a, uh, there is a dynamics of uh, how graduate students operate and how uh, academic, academic system works 
that uh, pushes people to track that uh, benchmark. So, yeah. To fo- <laughs> yeah. So that- <laughs> Nobody wants to think outside the box. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs>